What's up Guardians? Sly here and thanks for checking out another Sly Nation Destiny video. So with all of this Destiny 2 news coming out of the woodwork and a lot of speculation as well, I wanted to outline the top 6 biggest changes coming to Destiny 2. Now there are of course a lot of changes coming, but with questions on if this is truly a sequel or not, or simply a redesign of Vanilla Destiny, I wanted to point out on what will be the biggest changes and how this will impact the way we play the game. Now, of course, I have my own opinions on the whole is Destiny 2 really a sequel question, but I'll answer that another time. But what do you guys think? Do you think Destiny 2 is really just an upgraded vanilla version? There are equally valid arguments to both sides, and ultimately, we'll have to see when the time comes. All right, so let's get started, guys. We'll start with number six. And for some of those YouTubers out there who make a living off of Destiny, and trust me, I am definitely not one of them, this comes as a major surprise. Number six, no more Grimoire. That's right, guys. Those awesome little tidbits of lore that we're used to reading or seeing vids about, well, those are no longer going to be in Destiny 2. The supposed reason for this is that the lore will be quote-unquote in the game. But I personally can't see that happening. You know, when two different people watch the same thing, they both walk away with completely different feelings, different ideas, they walk, you know, what they take away from it, and etc. Unless they have a narrator tell a specific story, you know, sort of like an, an intro, I guess, to every mission, or every bit of new lore, it's going to be missed, guys. I mean, ghost scans, those were cool, and I loved looking for them. But you have no idea how many people I've shown the ghost scans to, and they never even knew that they existed, or that those areas were even scannable. Then think about how much lore is actually in the Grimoire cards, and there's going to be like a ghost scan every five feet. And if you do the storytelling cinematics, that's going to have to happen around every corner to get all of the Grimoire or all of the lore in the game. So personally, I don't think that's going to happen. Now, I really thought the Grimoire cards were actually a pretty decent medium. I mean, for people who really want to know the story, well, it's there for everyone to see. For those that just want to shoot shit, well, then you don't have to worry about it. The only way I can see that happening is if they do like a Mass Effect style conversation with NPCs. But that's not really Destiny style. Hopefully we'll hear more about this a little later on. Alright, so moving on to number 5, going to orbit. Now it may not seem like that big of a deal at first, but if you think about it, the game is basically centered around going to orbit. I mean, it's the player lobby. We wait there, we call friends to hurry up while we're there, we take bathroom breaks while we're up there. Players who have thousands of hours in Destiny will literally have a few hundred hours in orbit. I mean, easily. In Destiny 2, orbit hasn't completely vanished, so don't think that you'll never see your ship again. Instead of leaving the planet and heading to orbit, it's built right into the menu. As you can see here, all you have to do is hit the menu button, tab over, and then you'll have your view of the planets. You pick your destination, and boom, you are off. Now, I'm still willing to bet that orbit will be treated as a lobby, you know, for raids, strikes, you know, and as you can see here, the Crucible, you're still going to be chilling inside your ship, waiting to get into your activity. So, that's it's not completely gone away. My biggest hope is that ships actually have a meaning in Destiny 2. I doubt it, but I, I guess we'll have to see. Moving on to number four, intellect, discipline, strength, gone. So far from what we know, Destiny 2 will operate on a normalized cooldown. That basically means everyone will have melees, grenades, and supers on the exact same cooldown. However, there will be subclass and exotic perks that will decrease cooldown times for individual stats, but as a whole, everyone will have the same cooldown times. What we're gaining instead are three completely different stats. In place of intellect, discipline, and strength, we're going to have armor, agility, and recovery. So for all you Guardians out there that obsessed over Tier 12 gear, well, you're going to have to start chasing some new stats. Now, just as a reminder, all of this is based off of the reveal build. A lot could happen in four months, so some of this may change. With that said, one of the things I liked about these new stats is that, as you can see here, agility has been reworked completely. It now encompasses movement speed and jump height. So it's no longer just how fast you can, you know, run or walk. Agility affects at least these two things. Whether or not that will change, well, time will ultimately tell. Now, of course, armor and recovery are going to be the same thing as they were in Destiny 1. Armor is just how many hits you can take, and recovery is the amount of time it takes to start regening health. Alright, so moving on to number three, which is one I'm sure most of you have heard about, weapons and weapon slots. Now, on top of getting a new submachine gun class and a grenade launcher, the weapon loadouts will be completely different. Instead of primary, special, and heavy, we now have kinetic, energy, and power slots. Now, there's a lot of wrong information out there concerning these things, so let's go ahead and set the record straight. 
First off, kinetic weapons are any weapon that uses a standard bullet or projectile that's not a power weapon. So that means this first slot will not have an element attached to them. The types of weapons in this slot, well that's auto rifles, pulse rifles, scout rifles, submachine guns, and hand cannons, and even light machine guns. Now these will all fit into the kinetic slot. The old special slot is now known as an energy weapon slot. Now don't confuse energy weapons with lasers or plasma guns. It simply means weapons that have an element that are not power weapons. So again, auto rifles, pulse rifles, SMGs, scout rifles, and hand cannons, and assumingly LMGs. But they can have elements attached to them. So that means like, you know, void, solar, and arc. It's possible to have a hand cannon in your first kinetic slot and then a solar hand cannon in your energy slot for shielded enemies. Finally, moving on to the third slot, we have the power weapon slot, which used to be known as heavy weapons. However, there are some new additions to this. Power weapons are rocket launchers, grenade launchers, fusion rifles, whatever the hell this thing is, and the two big ones, sniper rifles and shotguns. So this changes how the game is played in a very big way in PvE and PvP. So now you can only snipe and shotgun people when you have heavy ammo. That is a huge change man so if you're one of those shotgunners that go invisible and wait around corners well guys you're finally going to have to fight and thank goodness the specifics of how shotguns are going to work you know those are still a little scarce but i'm assuming they'll be reset to their original fell winter lie days to justify making them a power weapon hopefully we'll see some specifics here soon all right and moving on to the last two and in my eyes the two biggest changes that we know of so far coming to destiny 2 all right, so number two, everything in the Crucible is now four on four. All game modes will switch over to four on four instead of the traditional six on six. Now, when this was announced, everyone started cheering at the reveal, but I'm not really certain why. I think having four on four modes, you know, that'd be absolutely great. But for everything? No way, man. I mean, I'm sure there'll be special events like doubles again, or maybe even an old playlist where six on six control comes back for a week. But making things 4-on-4 four four takes large maps out of the equation. There's just not enough people to fill it, and encounters will be underwhelming. Again, time will tell, but this is just a change I'm not that sure about. And finally, the biggest change coming to Destiny 2, major subclass changes. From what we have seen so far, there are three new subclasses coming to Destiny 2, but on top of that, they have revamped a few of the older subclasses as well. So that means two of the three most useful subclasses in Destiny will no longer exist. Defender Titan and its life savings, blessings, and weapons of light is out of the game, no longer exist. Also, the Sunsinger, Warlock, and its self-res, gone. And Blade Dancer, well, no one really cares about that one. We now have the Sentinel Titan, which replaces the Defender with its Captain America shield-like ability. And then we have the Dawnblade Warlock, which is a replacement for the Sunsinger Warlock and, of course, the Res. The Dawnblade has its aerial sword attack. And, of course, the last one is the Arc Strider Hunter with its Arc Staff. That's replacing the Blade Dancer. It's also very similar to a Blade Dancer, but a little more acrobatic. Those will be replacing, like I said, Defender, Sunsinger, and Blade Dancer. Now, on top of that, we know at least two other subclasses that have been radically changed. Those are the Striker Titan and the Gunslinger Hunter. The Striker Titan now uses its super similar to the Sunbreaker, where each attack drains the super bar, and as long as there's energy left in the bar, you can continue using the Fist of Havoc or its new move, which is kind of a beefed up shoulder charge. So instead of using all your super in one move, you can now Titan Slam up to five times, perhaps even more, depending on your subclass setup. The Gunslinger has also seen a similar change, whereas only being able to shoot three times, you can now unlock a subclass talent that allows you to shoot six times total. There are, of course, more changes than just those that I mentioned, and we haven't even seen what the three newest subclasses have turned into. Those are, of course, the Night Stalker, the Sunbreaker, and the Stormcaller. But the coolest thing about these subclass changes are that we are gaining a class ability. It seems like to me that Bungie realized just how powerful the War to Dawn was, and basically they split it up into two different class abilities. The Titan gets the ability to manifest a shield, but it's forward-facing only, leaving your backside exposed. And the second type is a crowd shield that when you snap into cover it auto reloads your weapons however it is much smaller moving on to the warlock it gets the best ability in my opinion and they basically get the weapons and blessing from the ward of dawn they can summon a rift that either heals you and your teammates or an empowering rift that buffs you and your team's weapon damage 
And for the Hunter, its class ability is kind of like a McCree type dodge. It's a simple dodge roll that kind of boosts you forward. Now there are two types of effects here as well. One will auto reload your weapons when you dodge and the other will build melee energy if you dodge near an enemy. Kind of underwhelming, but in the right hands, a good dodge is pretty hard to beat. Now it's not yet clear whether these abilities will stick through all three subclass types or if they are different for each. Now my guess is that they're going to stay the same, and if that's true, then that will most likely mean Shade Step is out of the picture as well. If you sit back and really think about the things that have just recently changed, it's the subclasses and the talents that have had a glitchy impact in the past that have been changed the most. Radiance, you know, that's been a pain in the ass for Bungie since day one, and the Titan Bubble makes things just too easy. Going invis as a blade dancer was pretty OP for back in the Crota days, and it's a shitty way to play in the Crucible. Shade Step can be used to throw off enemy projectiles, and it's also seen a nerf not too long ago because of its use in PvP. So these to me seem like changes with a purpose. Now like I said in another video, it's hard to make encounters when you can hide under an invincible bubble and come out with a shield or glitch your way through encounters by using Radiance, which by the way still works in Crota's End to this day. I'll be just as sad as everyone else to see these things go because I've grown to love them over the years, but guys, it is indeed time to move on. If they want to portray this as a new game like they're doing, bringing old problems back into a fresh start is the wrong way to come about it. Alright, well that's it guys. Those are my top 6 biggest changes coming to Destiny 2. Now like I said earlier, some of this is far from set in stone. And all based off of what we saw at the reveal on May 18th. Now we still don't know if the Night Stalker, the Stormcaller, and the Sunbreaker have had any changes or if they even exist at all anymore. On top of that, we still don't know if these class abilities will carry over throughout all three classes or if it's a different one for each. There is still lots to learn and hopefully you'll keep checking back to see what else is new in the world of Destiny. But that's it for me, ladies and gentlemen. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and for checking out my channel. Feel free to hit me up on Twitter or Facebook, Sly Nation or Sly Nation Gaming. It's the best way to stay up to date on everything Destiny, Destiny 2, Mass Effect, and of course, new uploads coming out of my channel. Take it easy, y'all, and keep an eye out for more videos coming out of Sly Nation here very soon. But until then, this is your boy Sly, and I'll catch you all next time. Yeah.